I'm breathing underwater, I'm weightless through space. I'm soaring like an eagle all over this place. Creatures most will never see are waiting there to look at me. And all I got to do is breathe underwater. The Sea View has been working hard for the past few weeks, mapping sections of the ocean floor that haven't been charted before. Suddenly, their sensors are picking up something big and metallic on the bottom. Of a closer view. It's a World War I era U boat, U 444 to be exact. That big gash in her side explains why she's on the bottom and not making any noise. Well, mark this position. I'd like to come back and investigate when you have more time. So would I. All ahead, standard. All ahead, standard. Engine room to con. We have no power. This is the captain. What's the trouble? Reactor power shut down, sir. No indication yet as to why. And without any power, the Sea View may soon join her on the bottom. There's no explanation. Things just suddenly stop working. The generators have plenty of juice flowing, but it's not getting to the machinery. Strong bottom currents are doing it. It, uh, it must be that. It's coming right up in front of us. We can't move. And none of the instruments are detecting any sound at all, which means whatever that thing is using for propulsion is absolutely silent. But without warning, Riley is picking up a noise from it. That's a looped recording if I ever heard one. It's supposed to sound like survivors asking for help, but it's too regular. If an actual person was doing that, it would either be a lot more erratic or they'd be tapping out SOS. Speaking of which, you know what SOS stands for? Nothing. It was chosen as the international distress signal because three short, three long, three short is so easy anybody can remember it and nobody can mistake it for anything else. Sorry the answer is so boring, but there it is. What the devil's going on? It's not back on the bottom, it's nowhere, and everything is working again. I'm looking around for David Copperfield because whoever is doing this is a master illusionist. No visual contact, no instrument contact, that thing out there just vanished. Any ideas? Just one. Let's get out of here. Your average master illusionist tends to come with a pretty high price tag. Let's be somewhere else before they send us the bill. Admiral Nelson has been asking Washington some questions. U-444 is a German submarine, first commissioned in July 1916. Any report on when it was sunk? It attacked an Allied convoy in September 1918. It was sent to the bottom by a Canadian subchaser. Canadian? What was it doing in the Central Pacific area? That didn't happen in the Central Pacific. It happened in the North Atlantic. That's a good 5,000 air miles from where we found her. More than 30,000 sea miles. When the sub started moving, Nelson blamed strong bottom currents. If the currents can do that, the sea view should think about staying out of them. But this day is going to get weirder. There's some debris on the surface and there's a man hanging onto it. 
here in the middle of nowhere. No ships have been in the area for days. They bring the man aboard. He's in good shape, just wet. Check the generator. Generator's okay, sir. Good evening, gentlemen. I request permission to come below. He looks in and the lights dim. He has a German accent just like that derelict sub did. And we know he's a bad guy because Alfred Ryder is playing him. I believe God created that face especially so he could play villains. He started acting professionally at the age of eight and kept doing it until the Grim Reaper caught up with him in 1995. He's best known for his character acting on television, but he was a major figure on Broadway, both as an actor and as a director. He did several movies and was pretty much an all-around renaissance man when it came to the performing arts. We've only seen him once before in Land of the Giants, but he'll be back in Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea later this season and again in Season 3. As I've said before, the actors Irwin liked, he liked a lot. And there's nothing not to like about this guy. Even though I have some serious issues with the episode, he's genuinely scary. I'm Captain Gerhard Kruger of the SS Edelweiss out of Hamburg. My thanks for the rescue. Are there other men out there? None, Captain. Okay, he's the captain of a ship called the Edelweiss that sank not long ago. What happened? Those are the facts, gentlemen. My vessel was rammed by a submarine, a World War I U-boat. Um, there's uh, no such craft in commission. That is true, but I'm convinced that this was a ghost ship, a flying Dutchman. <coughs> Stories of ghost ships abounded during the colonial age, and the Flying Dutchman was, and more properly is, the most famous. The tale varies from time to time and place to place, but the most consistent parts say the ship was trying to make port in bad weather and couldn't, and somehow that meant she could never make port and was doomed to wander the oceans forever. That's why she appears during bad storms. She's still fighting the elements trying to finish her journey. But how does your basic U-boat become a flying Dutchman? They set Kruger up in a cabin so he can rest, but given the classified nature of so much of the boat, he'll have an escort, which is to say a guard. Right now, it's Kowalski's turn. Captain Kruger, stand right where you are. Did you call me? It's pretty clear who our master illusionist is. Kowalski won't tell anybody about this, even after things start getting weirder. I'm convinced the man's insane. I wouldn't go that far, Lee. Then how do you explain this wild story and this report from Hamburg? There's no such ship called the SS Edelweiss, and there never was. The whole thing's an elaborate lie. They're headed for Hawaii, and they can't drop this guy in Honolulu fast enough. He's creeping everybody out. Oh, you should have checked these figures. I did, sir. Either the computer's blown its cork, or I have. My money's on the computer. Everything all right, sir? Oh, everything's great if you like the South Seas. How did we get here? Those coordinates are right. We've been sailing due south all night. Everything in the computer says they're headed for Hawaii, but the truth is they're 300 miles off course. Navigation reports that one of their instruments got reset and threw them off, but nobody touched it. Kowalski, you were guarding uh, Captain Kruger's cabin last night, weren't you? Yes, sir. Until I got off watch. But uh, somebody was on duty all night. Anything wrong, sir? Very wrong, Kowalski. Sir. Yes, uh, nothing. I'm sorry, sir. Tell him, Kowalski. He doesn't want to sound as crazy as Kruger. It's a mistake. Admiral, do you know who I am? I know who you told us you are. Do you know who I am, Admiral? 
I don't have time to play games if... Uh... This is not a game and you know it is not. What if I were to tell you that I am what you suspect me to be? A suspicion you would not dare verbalize for fear of being ridiculed by your men. What does Nelson suspect? He'll never come right out and say. But Kruger is the one doing all these strange things to the boat. I think you're talking in uh, circles. Now, if you'll excuse me, I... Now who is playing games, Admiral? I willed you to know who I am last night. Now you must believe it. Again, if you'll excuse me. I am here on a mission. A mission of life and a mission of death. And I need your help. With what? That'll have to wait. Captain Crane just came in. Excuse me, Admiral. Captain Kruger. I'll have to confine you to the brig for the rest of your stay on the ship. As you wish, sir. Now here's the thing. He said he willed Nelson to know what he is. That suggests some kind of telepathic ability at the least. Based on what Kowalski saw, he also has some way to cast illusions. So there's a lot more to him than meets the eye, but Admiral Nelson is keeping all that to himself. It seems to me the captain of the boat has a right to know the whole story. He's busy getting them back on course, but there's something in the way. You give me couldn't be, he give me is. Something supernatural is going on here, and it revolves around Kruger and that sub. Right now, they should be glad U-444 doesn't have any torpedoes left. I've never seen a ship that looked more like a derelict. But, uh, those noises from inside now. How do you explain that? A remote control electronic device. Somebody's got a way of controlling that sub, and they're hanging right on our tail. Why? 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 For one thing, the crew is starting to freak out. Captain Crane thinks that's a good reason. And unless they have detection devices better than anything we know about, they have to be getting their information from right here aboard this ship. Could it? Well, do you have a better explanation? Frankly? No. Let's look at it this way. If you had been wandering the ocean for 60 years in that, taking over the sea view might look rather appealing, don't you think? There's a big whoosh, a bunch of bubbles, and the sub is gone again. No talking to the prisoner. Sorry, Chief. Chief. Yep. May I borrow your pen? Oh, sure. Uh, what for? Well, it is my hobby to draw charts, but I find it difficult without the writing materials. Why do I get the feeling giving a pen to this guy is like giving one to Hannibal Lecter? Your pen, please. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't give you anything without the permission of the captain. Thank you. Now he's taunting them. Admiral Nelson is ready to wrap this day up and get some sleep. Admiral Nelson. I don't often comment on the music, which is always very well done, but this scene caught my ear. We start with a solo bassoon at a clarinet and a gentle duet, and oboe joins in, all soft woodwinds that suggest relaxation and sleep. Admiral Nelson. And then the low strings come in with an ominous line. It carries us into the false sense of security and then hits us with, hey, you're not as secure as you thunk you were. I don't know how much training it takes to write programmed music like that, but I didn't get that much. 
Kruger is finally ready to tell Nelson what he wants. I want you to kill Captain Crane. You are mad. This is no wild caprice. I have waited through the years for such a man as your captain. Waiting for what? My career was so short, so suddenly cut off. But I can be incarnate in him. He's young, vital, so alive. He's a great naval career ahead of him. You want to take over his body? Exactly. He said he made Kruger immortal, so why does he need a new body? I agree that Crane is better looking, but is that so important? Well, you seem to be able to get around pretty well, Kruger. I don't see why you don't do the job yourself. It is impossible for me to take the life of the body I want to possess. So I come to you, a man who can understand this unique problem. I'm afraid that you overestimate my understanding. I doubt that very much, Admiral. He says, you can kill Captain Crane for me, or I can destroy your sub and kill everyone aboard, including you. Your choice. Your position is here. Am I right? You know it is. You altered our course. I told you I would give you time to accept me. The deed must be done before the submarine crosses north of the 16th parallel. Cross that line before you have killed your captain. And it is the end of the submarine and all aboard her. That means giving up on Crane's body because he said he can't kill the body he wants to inhabit. If Nelson thought of that, he might have a little leverage, but he didn't thought of it. Admiral. I've had it with Kruger. So has the crew. I want him off the ship now. We're a good seven hours from Hawaii. I'm afraid you'll have to wait. The flying sub could have him at Hickam Field in an hour. You're that desperate to get him off the ship? Aren't you? I say the quicker we get him off the ship, the better. All right. I don't know if you're doing the right thing, but to uh, have it your own way. Chip, have a flying sub made ready for immediate launch. Nelson will go tell Kruger the news. Open the cell door, please. Captain Kruger. Or not. While they start searching, Chip is preparing the flying sub. He'll be okay, but the flying sub isn't going anywhere. Sharky examines the damage and says it was sabotage. If Kruger went locked in the brig, I think it was him. He isn't. <coughs> he isn't what? He isn't locked in the brig. He explains. Now Captain Crane isn't just furious, he's looking around for a yardarm to hang Kruger from. While he sets up a search, Admiral Nelson got an eyes-only message from Washington. It's about the German submarine U-444 and its captain. I managed to monkey with the letter enough to read it so you don't have to worry about whether you need to. It just says here's the info you requested. And that photo was Kruger in a World War I naval uniform. Admiral. So you refused to listen. I listened, Kruger. And you ignored my warning. Or perhaps you did not believe that I was serious. The explosion in your flying sub should have proven otherwise. I am very serious. I want Captain Crane dead. Why do you think that anything would make me kill Lee Crane? The death of one man to save the lives of a hundred others is an extraordinary bargain. If that's a bargain, I'll go to the store down the street and pay full price. Kruger is preaching a philosophy known as utilitarianism, which says the greatest good is that which provides the greatest happiness for the greatest number of people. 
In the second Star Trek movie, Spock set out the same philosophy when he said the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. It sounds good on the surface until you get into a scenario like this. No matter what Nelson does, the only one who's likely to come out happy is Kruger, so that isn't serving the needs of the many. If he does kill Crane so Kruger can take over his body, Nelson will never be happy again, and the crew will hate him, which means they're not happy. Again, the only one who comes out ahead is Kruger. Stuff like this is why utilitarianism doesn't work. If we're having a pizza party and little Murgatroyd over here doesn't like pizza so he has to figure out something else, then the principle of what makes the most people happy works. In a situation any more complicated than that, not so much. Captain Crane is not only a fine officer. A very close, close friend. That is unfortunate, Admiral. Perhaps you are doing your friend an injustice not to kill him. I can give his body immortality. But he won't be in there to enjoy it. You will. Admiral Nelson likes Lee Crane. He doesn't like you. Admiral, we've gone through... Chief, come in here. Sir. I want Captain Kruger for the Nyans. Aye, aye, sir. And if he tries to escape one more time, I want him shot on sight. He poofed out of the cell. What makes you think he can't poof out of irons, too? But what else do you do with someone like him in a submarine? Lee, how long before we cross the 16th parallel? Well, I'd say uh, three or four hours. I'm going to the control room. I'll find out. Yes. Let's do that. Lee? Yes. Well, I'll, I'll join you there a little later. Tell him what you know, Admiral. Tell him what you learned from that message. Tell him what Kruger is. He won't. But just in case Kruger can mess with his mind, he takes his pistol out of the desk and puts it in his wall safe. You. But again, what else is Captain Crane supposed to do with him? They don't have the supplies to make a circle of salt. No way all of those missed, but he didn't even flinch. Lee! What's going on? He's loose again. He broke out of the irons and he escaped. Stay away from that man. Why should I? I'm asking you to, isn't that enough? Why are you trying to protect Kruger? I'm trying to protect you. Admiral, this time I'm going to finish it. Tell him, Admiral, you don't have to tell him all your suspicions, but make it clear that you know Kruger wants him dead and you don't know what lengths he'll go to. Instead, he gives his best friend because I said so. Sorry, Mother, he's the captain and what happens is his responsibility. So in the absence of anything more lame, he'll keep doing what he's doing. Halt! Make a move and you're dead. I got him! I got him! You got him, but you didn't get him. That sends Kowalski over the edge. Let's let Del Monroe show off a little. Kruger! 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 What's he shooting at? Like he knows, he's not in there at the moment. Leave a message after the bang. Kowalski, what's the matter? Where is he? Kowalski, what's the matter? What's the matter? Hey, get a hold of this. Kowalski! Hey, come on! Get him, you guy! What's the matter? Kowalski! Watch his back! What's his left? What's his left? 
What is it? He's flipped his lid, sir. You're, you're a cougar. Turn it! Kowalski, I'm now, Raina, stop out of it. Come on, come on, Kowalski. Take him a sick bay. Convincing enough for you? And it's even more powerful because Kowalski is just about the last guy I'd expect to lose it like that. This is what Kruger is doing to the crew. Hold it, Kruger! Over here, Skipper! We got him, Skipper. Those were some effective shots, considering there aren't any bullet holes on the inside of the door. But he doesn't have a pulse, and he's not breathing. He's as dead as they can make him. Crane performs a quick burial at sea. We therefore commit his body to the deep, looking to the general resurrection in the last day, and the life of the world to come, and to his second coming and glorious majesty to judge the world. The sea shall give up her dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his glorious body. Somehow I don't see Kruger being part of that particular event. He wraps it up, they dump the body into the water, and that should be the last they see of him. I think Admiral Nelson is having a hard time believing it's over. Lee, um, what's our exact position? Right now we should be crossing the 16th parallel. Is it? Of course I'm certain. No, he has a dart board and he throws the darts at it blindfolded to figure out their position. What kind of question is that? What's wrong, Admiral? Ever since Kruger came aboard, you... you you've acted... Just leave, leave, leave it alone, eh? I, I have the strangest feeling that you know more about Kruger than you've said. He did things that would ordinarily make you blow your stack. Yet the stranger his actions were, the more tolerant you were. Why? I said leave it alone, Lee. He told Kruger that Lee is his close friend. So why is he doing this to him? He's being unfair not just to his friend, but to the skipper of the vessel. Crane needs to know everything so he can make decisions accordingly, but Nelson is hamstringing him. Well... It's all academic now, anyway. He won't bother us again. He's back. What? The 16th parallel. They are certain we're crossing it now. I told you we're crossing it now. What's the matter with you? Tell him the whole story, Nelson. If he's going to pull the trigger, doesn't Lee at least deserve to know why? What happened? You know, you know something about Kruger, don't you? There's something you're not telling me. Now, what is it? I'm sorry, but this is so out of character for Admiral Nelson, I can't hold back anymore. This is not the Harriman Nelson we know, and this is not the friend of Lee Crane that we know. He knows Kruger is some kind of supernatural being inhabiting Kruger's body. Does he think Crane won't believe him? They've already met aliens as well as a guy from a pre-homo sapiens civilization. They've seen a giant octopus, squid, jellyfish, and catfish. They've seen Fluffy. Why would he not believe this? I wonder if Kruger is supposed to be trying to take over his mind or something, but we won't get any explanation at all. Tell me what happened! Tell me what's happened! Tell me! If I'm Captain Crane, I go grab that gun, shove it in Nelson's face and say, now you can tell me everything or we can call you one nostril Harry for the rest of your life. What's it going to be? Later, they're running on the surface in a thick fog.
Admiral. What is it? Blips on radar screen. I've never seen this kind before. It's a large object on the surface. Range? Range 1,500 yards on an intersecting course. What if I kept in Crane on the bridge? Crane is up on the sail doing lookout. They have an infrared searchlight for looking through the fog. The pattern they're seeing on sonar says the other boat is trying to ram them. Earlier, Captain Crane said he had had enough of this guy. What's the next step in irritation beyond that? Missile wrong. Activate magnetic homing missile. Ready with number four. Aye, aye, sir. Bearing zero two zero. Range 500 yards. Stand by. Aye, aye, sir. As soon as everything is ready, he says fire. Take it down. Aye, sir. It's going back to the bottom in even worse shape than when they found it. What about its captain? He should have guessed. This guy cannot take a hint. What kind of torpedo did you shoot at the U-boat? It, uh, it wasn't a torpedo. It was a metal-seeking missile. Atlantic dowsing equipment, there was no chance of avoiding the hit. And the fog, it provided no cover. Our infrared searchlights all right through it. Gentlemen, I must ask your forgiveness. I thought creatures like him didn't do the forgiveness thing, but I guess it's different when they're on the wrong end of it. I am beginning to realize that I have made a mistake. It has taken me until now to recognize the fact that there was a basic flaw in my plan. You mean besides asking a man to murder his best friend? Oh, I could still destroy you by a wave of my hand. But it would be to no avail. I already explained why you'd be killing the body you want to inhabit, and the rules say you can't do that. I know now that I am behind the times. Too far behind. It used to be so much simpler. Everything was so much simpler. I gave him too much credit. He's just an old fart who can't keep up. I'd love to see his reaction to the internet. But I don't get it. He's been bopping around the oceans of the world since 1918, and he didn't notice that a lot of things were changing. What was he doing all that time? Where was he during the Second World War? So many things don't make sense. So, gentlemen, I apologize, and I leave you to your modern world with all its bewildering hardware. Now I want to show him video of a robotic knee replacement and watch his head explode. I wonder where it will take you. That's it. The bad guy says, oh, wait, I don't belong here, and just gives up. That's it. That's our big payoff. Come on. I don't believe you'll come back again. It's out of place and out of time here. I think he finally realizes it. All right. Man your stations. Full speed ahead. And Nelson never does tell Crane what that guy was. What was he? A ghost? A demon? A guy with a 60-year grudge about being sunk? This was a bad episode. Look, 
I'm a Christian and a strong advocate for the reality of Jesus' resurrection. I'm okay with weird events that I can't explain rationally, but not in my fiction. Tell me what this guy was. More important, tell the captain. Kruger wanted Crane's body, but never said what was wrong with the one he had. Apparently, he decided it was time for an upgrade. But while he was deciding that, he apparently was sitting on the bottom of the ocean, letting the world pass him by until somebody blundered along and found him. There are so many plot holes, you could build a golf course around them. I know it's inevitable that we start getting weird plots like this, but I don't mind that. I do mind them being done badly. If you're going to be weird, at least be properly weird. Like me. I'm breathing underwater. I'm weightless through space. I'm soaring like an eagle all over this place. Creatures most will never see are waiting there to look at me. And all I gotta do is breathe underwater. For propulsion. Propul I can say propulsion. I'm sorry, did. Uh, come on. Put a noise with it. That's right, get good grief from it. Relaxation, 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 and sleep. Suggest relaxation, relaxation, relaxation. Just relaxing, re relaxing, relaxation, and relaxing, relaxation, and sleep. Okay. A gentle duet, duet, in a situation anymore. And oh, man, I had it. In a situation and any more compliment. What? If that's. Oh, man, stop that.